This module introduces some number systems that are important in computer science. The first system is decimal, and we will be converting between decimal and binary, which is a language, or rather number system, most used by computers. Now, we're familiar with decimal. The decimal numbers start at zero, and then count down all the way to nine. And at this point, we have exhausted all of the available digits. So we start reusing digits. The value in what we call the ones position goes from nine to a zero. And we add a new digit, one, to the left of it, in what we call the tens position. Now from here, we can leave this one here and continue counting up in order in the ones position. Now this will continue, and we know that it eventually leads to the number 19, at which point adding 1 will make us run out of digits in the 1s column yet again. The 9 will become a 0, and the 1 will increase to a 2 to give us 20. And if we go even further with this process, we'll eventually reach the number 99. And so increasing this by one yet again will cause us to run out of digits in the ones column and run out of digits in the tens column, causing us to add a third column of digits starting at one. This is the hundreds column. So this pattern can continue indefinitely, making larger and larger numbers. Now, binary numbers count in a similar fashion, but are restricted to only two digits. The reason for that is that by means two, whereas deci means 10. So in a decimal number system, we have 10 available digits. And in a binary system, we have only two available digits. These digits are 0 and 1. And the reason this system is relevant to computers is because it is an easy way of representing the presence or absence of electrical voltage. So everything in a computer is represented using binary numbers. But when we use binary, we quickly run out of digits. So the pattern of repeating digits and then adding more to the left happens sooner. So from one, increasing by one causes this to be replaced by a zero and a new one to be added one column over. So one zero is the binary representation of two. Now I'm going to continue counting if I add one here, I will get one one, which is the binary representation of three. And adding one again causes us to run out of available digits in this column, and run out of available digits in this column, and then add yet a third column to get the binary representation of four. Now, if you think you understand the pattern, this is a good point to pause the video and continue counting on through the rest of the digits here. But once you come back from that, you can check your work and see the numbers I'm about to count out. So we have 5, 6, 7, and then 8 causes us to add a new column. Then we have 9, 10, 11, and then 12. Let's go ahead and skip ahead. 
And this may not be immediately obvious, but the binary representation of 19 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, you could count to this number, but there is actually an easier way to convert between these two number systems, which we will explore more in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and add the binary number for 20, which if we add 1 to this, that becomes a 0, that becomes a 0. We get a 1 here, and then a 0, then a 1. And going on to 99, we would have 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Once again, not obvious, but I'll explain momentarily how we derive this. But if you know this is 99, then you know that adding 1 to it would put zeros in these positions, a 1 here, and then we would have 0, 0, 1, 1. And as with the decimal numbers, this can go on as far as you'd like. So let's explore why 19 in decimal equals 10011 in binary. But first, let's look at a different number in decimal, specifically 645. Now, what does 645 mean? It means that we have six hundredths added to 40, which is four tens, added to five. These are the digits in the ones, tens, and hundreds columns, respectively. Now, we can break this up more and show that 600 is 6 times 10 squared. And 40 is 4 times 10 raised to the 1. 10 to the 1 is just 10. Plus 5 times 10 raised to the 0, remembering that any number raised to the 0th power is equal to 1. So these exponents correspond to positions here. This is position 0, this is position 1, this is position 2, and if there were more digits to the left, they would be in increasingly numbered positions. We can do something similar with binary numbers. This number here, 10011, equals 19 for the following reason. If I write out 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then put exponents over these positions, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I will be able to expand this. But instead of using 10, which is used in decimal, I will use 2 because binary uses a base of 2. So this number is equal to 1 times 2 to the fourth power plus 0 times 2 to the third plus 0 times 2 squared plus 1 times 2 to the 1, plus 1 times 2 to the 0. In binary, we can eliminate numbers very quickly because 0 times anything is 0, and 1 times any number is itself. So this is simply equal to 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the 0. We eliminated the zeros and got rid of the unnecessary 1s. And if you are familiar with your powers of 2, which you will eventually be if you continue studying computer science, 
you will see that 2 to the 4th is 16, and 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 to the 0 is 1, which added together equals 19.